once every five years, this man pencils me into his schedule, and this is our day. Mike Campbell, how are you? That's awfully generous of me, don't you think? <laughs> it I'm, really is. I've waited so long to get back well, here. Well, I'm pretty well under the circumstances, being here in the, in the north, you know. I'll tell you, you have been busy since, and it literally was five years ago that we actually sat down for was a it chat. That long ago? It was. Man, it feels like about 20 minutes ago. Is that true? Yeah. I don't, is that a compliment? I, I think wonder. so, yeah. Yeah. Either that or time just flies when you start getting as old as I am. Well, and there, or you can't remember the passage of it. <laughs> Maybe that's it but yeah. you've had a lot of memorable nights, and that's a fact. Yeah. Tons yes. of talent in yep. here. Um, yes. And so I always ask somebody like yourself, Who's hot? Who's happening? Who do you want in this joint right now? Holy smokes. Well, that's a question that we haven't got enough time for Come that. Come on. We Give haven't got enough few. time for and that. And you've got a lineup already. I mean, you've never stopped, really. Well, no, not really. I mean, you know, the funny thing about running a venue, which is not anything I set out to do, but it's what wound up happening with the place, is that you have to feed the machine, right? And, if, and, uh, and by feeding the machine, you need a constant... Um, constant flow of talent coming into the place people and you know as 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 amazing as the music scene is here and you know you know exactly how much talent we have here as much as we have we don't have enough to feed the machine so you know you need people to come in from other parts of the world or other parts of the country and you know we've had a little bit of that this year it's been slow so far the first few months although you know I had mid-year from Ultravox come in and play flew in from the UK that was sold out and the fortunate ones actually speaking of hot you know they just released their first record and it's getting tons of airplay on the CBC and they sold out last night with Del Barber from Winnipeg um, coming up uh, I haven't announced it yet but uh, we'll be doing our annual Sky Diggers four nights here in June. Nice. And yeah, I never really expect it's ever going to happen again, but now it seems we've gotten into some sort of a rhythm. So <laughs> Andy just calls and goes, same time next year. Yep, okay, same I time next I wonder that, year. though. Now, so I'm out, like, I'm, I'm touring. And do, do people call you and go, hey, Mike, I'm going to be coming through Halifax. Can I do a night? Or Yeah, yeah, I get about... 10 emails a day from people that want to play here. Is that true? Well, I I mean, uh, obviously everyone wants to play here, but I'm talking about the, you know, obviously the court. Yeah, well, (laughs) you know who I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, the the names, the the Ron Sexmas of the world, the Gordy Sampsons, they just go, hey, I'm home. Which reminds me, Ron, he has not called in the last couple of years, so... It's probably about time he, he I checked in with him. Maybe that's he's probably waiting for me to call. Maybe him. that's what yeah, it is. That but you never be, call. Uh, his thing. Um, and I just heard that um, that Lloyd Cole, who we had play at the Halifax Urban Folk Festival a few years ago, uh, apparently he wants to come back this summer sometime. So I'm working on dates with him. Um, yeah, there's a ton of stuff in the pipeline. It's just it, it, it's just never ending. Right. And it's and it's and it's not like I'm not getting a lot of talented people that want to come and play here because they are. But I get a lot of people that I just don't know who they are. Right. right? And if but I you've been known to break talent, Mike. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I have and will continue to do yeah. it. It's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's who like, should we know about that we don't know? Um, there's a guy out there that we all should know because he lives on PEI named Dennis Ellsworth, who's yes. about as good a songwriter as I've heard in quite some time. Another guy who is coming at the end of this month who I'm... You, I'm sure you probably have heard of at least. Ron Hawkins from the lowest of the low has just released an album on the same label that Plaskett and Mo Kenny are on, Pheromone Records in right, Toronto. Right. And uh, he's put out an album called Garden Songs that's about as good a record as I've heard in the last five years. And he's playing here on the 27th of March, I think. Oh, and that's going to be cool too because it's going to be an early show on a Friday. So it's going to start at 7 o'clock. So if, you, you know, if you're a fan... Right. And, uh, you can come out and see the show and then decide what you want to do with the rest of your night. And then we have uh, another local band, Upper Commerce, I really like, called Scrapes. Qu'est-ce que c'est le genre yes. of Scrapes? They're pretty much a straight-ahead rock and roll band, okay. but the writing is really good, and they're really good players. They're one of those bands that formed at uh, St. of X, you know, one of the okay. music program there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're a really, really good band, great, great guys. So I, the, the idea popped into my head because I was going to book them for later on on Friday night. And I thought... Well, they're going to be here. Ron's playing solo, or he was at the time, and his songs, he's going to do some lowest of the low stuff. It'd be great. You know, it's too bad he can't afford to bring a band out. It's like, wait a minute. What if Scrapes learns some of Ron's songs like we do 
with the Halifax Urban Folk Festival. We bring a um, uh, bring a headliner in and then put a band together right. for the artists, which we've done with great success over the years. People absolutely love it. So that's going to happen for Ron's show. He's going to do cool. the first part of it solo, and then the band's going to learn four or five songs and do it at the end, and then the band will play later that Huge night. Huge deal the for road. them, too, right? Everybody yeah. wins in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, look, we send the stuff off, and they go, wow, this stuff is really good. Yeah. yeah. We'd love to play it. Cool. You know? Yeah. All right, now let's, you just sort of dropped it in there. Let's talk about Huff, because that's yeah. kind of cool and getting bigger every year. Well, you know, I'm not in any big hurry to blow it up into some huge kind of thing, but the stuff that we've been doing here over the past three, four years and the artists that we're managing to get in is um, so encouraging, and people are starting to catch on to the fact that, uh, especially because my choices for these kinds of things are a little outside the mainstream. Right. For I mean, for a bunch of reasons. First of all, mainstream artists... We can't afford them, you know. Nobody wants to pay. Well, maybe they will pay a hundred bucks a ticket to see somebody. I haven't tried that on for size yet, but uh, like I would. Um, but you know, most of the artists I get still cost a reasonable amount of money, and, but they are uniformly spectacularly good. Right. So, uh, and this whole idea of, um, of bringing them in for three days so that they can experience the place, which is kind of the M.O. of it, right? So, right. But they play all three nights. Uh, each night, one of the headliners headlines, obviously. And the two nights they're not headlining, they're part of an opening songwriter's circle that we augment the third chair with somebody local, like like heavy local, like Plaskett right. or Mays or Stephen Fearing or somebody like that. Right. So you can come on any night and see all three headliners, wow. but you can That's pick cool. the one that you want to see with a full band. And last year, for the first time, like in previous years, the bands would meet at Soundcheck, literally. Oh, you're kidding. No, they would meet at Soundcheck. The bands already rehearsed, so they'd run through the whole set, then take a couple extra minutes to work on a few things if there was anything problematic. But last year, Joel Plaskett um, uh, offered up uh, New Scotland Yard Studios for rehearsals. So when Garland Jeffries from New York was meeting his band, it was in the studio setting, and we were recording everything, and we shot everything. And uh, uh, so we've got some great footage of, you know, my buddy, you know, Stuart Cameron. I do. Yeah, Stuart. So I flew Stuart in to play lead guitar with uh, David Perner from Soul Asylum and his band, and then he wound up meeting Garland Jeffries. Yeah, and Garland... Yeah, experience, yeah, right? Yeah, That's and Garland so cool. loved it, and he and Stuart are back and forth, right. and Stuart goes to New York, they're going to meet, and yeah. so all of those nice little friendships are made, and uh, this coming year we're hoping to build in an extra day for everybody so that we can have our headliners spend a day co-writing with some of our best artists. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so the idea would be cool. like, well, you can co-write, do you want to do that on a sailboat, or would you like to do that in a cottage, would you like to be on the ocean, would you like and to be on the And that's a music special. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. So I've confirmed one guy so far for Huff this year. It's Chuck Prophet. He's from California. He used to be in a Californian band called Green on Red. He's co-written the last three Alejandro Escovedo albums with him, and I've been listening to almost nothing but his stuff for the last three months. It's that good. And he's locked in. He's locked in, and he's a surfer. So oh, cool. It's going to be fabulous. He can't beat it. Yeah. He'll be out in Lawrencetown yeah. most of the time. Yeah. All right. Well, Mike Campbell, the other side of this business, because I know you talk about the music, which is a huge part, but it's an experience to come here, have a wonderful yeah. meal, and enjoy some for. entertainment, That's right? For, yeah. And now we talk about it. you got lunch, you got supper, you got weekends. What, what? I mean, really, all the time, right? Pretty much, you know. In the winter time, like a lot of people in the city, we hibernate, you know. So I'm not open on Sundays unless it's a show thing. But in the spring, as the sun comes in, we'll be open regular hours. And uh, yeah, the one thing that people seem to overlook about the place, as hard as we try, is uh, yeah, it's a really excellent place to come to eat it is it yeah. really is the food is great uh, i'm 100 percent happy with it and I'm, right. I'm proud of what we do here but most people when they think of us it's just like oh yeah that's a place that you go to see a concert you go see a show but uh, no no yeah, we got a great happy hour right now too <laughs> i was gonna say and they have fantastic adult beverages yeah we have right great, yeah we have great adult beverages and uh, um yeah yeah we just kicked off a new happy hour the food a couple of appetizers for you know pick any two with a list for 10 bucks and this uh, I came in and tested it out it's like had to talk to the kitchen and say are you sure we're making money on this Cause, <laughs> because those portions like I ate two of them and I don't really need to eat dinner anymore so wow. we might be cutting off our, our noses <laughs> despite our face but we'll figure that out but the, you know, our aim is to please so nice. you know, that's the plan and that's from like four to six during the week uh, so it's, even, it's not a happy hour, it's a happy two hours. Right. Really. You can't be happy enough. No, I was very happy after, <laughs> after I tried it out for the first time. <laughs> you should come in and do that. I'm coming.